Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today I've got one of the most heavily requested loads on the channel. Today we're going to be shooting Barnes Vortex and 308 Winchester, both the 150 and 168 grain TTSX loads. And here are your boxes for those Barnes Vortex 308 Winchester TTSX boat tail loads, both the 150 grain and 168. Let's go ahead and look at the promo info on the back. It's the same for both loads, so feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like it's just talking about the x bullet and then we'll take a look at the stated velocities we'll stack them up here so we can see them both side by side so the 150s are stated at 2900 feet per second and the 168s at 2700 feet per second you can see the trajectory data there as well the 150s shoot a little bit flatter and we'll see how close we get to these velocities we will be shooting these out of a 22 inch barreled ruger american no doubt those velocities were measured from a 24 inch barrel Two inches shouldn't make or break a load, so we'll see how close we get to that. Let's go ahead and pull this out and take a look. And they look basically identical to the naked eye, so I'm just going to pull out one of the 150s and we'll take a look at it. There it is. There's your Barnes TTSX Bullet in 308. Let's go shoot it and see how they do. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22-inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are your velocities for that Barnes 150 grain TTSX load out of the 308. Minimum 2882, max 2903, average 2890. And here are your velocities for the 168 grain TTSX load. Minimum 2623, max 2636 for an average of 2630. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting both the 150 grain and 168 grain Barnes TTSX boat tails out of the 308 Winchester. Let's talk about the 150s first. We captured three bullets for both loads. We've got two stacked right there. They did not table skate. They came to rest in the block just on top of the plywood. So we're going to count those and then we got one more right there. And in terms of penetration, we're going to give these two 29 and a half and this one is right at 31 inches. Excellent penetration out of the 150s. And it looks like we got some great mushrooming as well. Of course, we'll dig these out in a second and take a look. Wound cavity wise, we'll come on back to the first block. Nice clean wound cavities as per standard with solid copper bullets, nothing too explosive. I did recently test the 130 grain version of this load, which did create a much more substantial wound cavity up front. These bullets are going quite a bit slower so they did what copper bullets do which is go in expand create a pretty modest wound cavity from about eh, the one inch mark all the way back really it tapers off completely by about 13 inches but it starts to taper off right about here i'd say at about the nine inch mark definitely do what you need it to on medium game but once again, just nothing too explosive out of these solid copper bullets. And then we'll come on over to the 168s. These went all the way back to the third block. I'm glad I had three blocks for these. 
And penetration wise, we got one at 36 inches, one at 39 inches, and one way back here, where is it? It's down there towards the bottom of the block at 42 inches. I mean, that is just phenomenal penetration out of these solid copper bullets. And this third block is a block I've used before. I flipped it around. There was an entry wound here. I'm reusing it. I don't have unlimited gel blocks, so that's why you might see a wound cavity here. It doesn't affect anything. And just like the 150s, it looks like we got some good mushrooming there. Of course, we'll dig these out as well. Coming on back to the first block, same story with the wound cavities, nothing too explosive. And I will say that these 168s flung this front block around less than the 150s. So these 150s are, you could say, hitting harder initially than these 168s. These 168s just kind of go in and punch on through without a whole lot of fanfare. Similar story by about the one inch mark, they're opened up. You know, good, decent wound cavity, tapers off by right about the 13 inch mark again, starts to come down. Eh, these are a bit longer. These are a bit longer than the 150s. The 150s kind of had a taper down, then another taper down. These 168s kind of maintain just a slow taper all the way to the 13 inch mark. Definitely wouldn't want to get hit by that, that's for sure. So we're going to go ahead and dig all these guys out and take a look. And real quick, for those that always want to see it, here are my groups for this load. Here is the 150, that's about a 1 and 3 8 inch group. And then here's the 168, that's exactly 1 inch right there. So hit the MOA mark, and I'm not trying very hard when I shoot these groups. This is just to see where the bullets are going. I don't re-zero my rifle every time for every load. So this is me ripping off three rounds pretty quick, not trying super hard, just trying to see where the bullets are gonna go as compared to my zero, so I can actually hit the blocks where I want to. But there you go, they're plenty accurate enough for hunting, and I'm sure you could get better groups than this if you're actually trying hard. All right, y'all, we've got the bullets out of the gel. Let's go ahead and hit all the metrics for these 150 and 168 grain Barnes TTSX bullets out of the 308 Winchester. For the 150s, weight retention, 149 grains across the board, the one grain that's missing is probably that plastic tip. That's 99% weight retention. Excellent performance. For the 168s, 167 grains across the board. Again, 99% weight retention. The fact that they're all one grain less than the listed weight of the bullet leads me to believe it's that plastic tip that we're missing. So excellent. Expansion for the 150s, 0 0.64, 0 0.64, and 0.65 inches for an average of 0.64 inches expanded diameter. That's 2.1x expansion, excellent performance, extremely consistent. For the 168s, we saw 0 0.53, 0 0.56, and 0 0.57 inches, a little bit less consistent, but man, they're all right there still. For an average of 0.55 inches expanded diameter for 1.8x expansion, little bit less expansion, kind of makes sense, it's a heavier bullet. Velocity wise, for the 150s, we saw 2903 for the high, 2883 for the low, for an average of 2891 versus the box spec of 2900 feet per second. So we only came in nine feet per second slow on average and our high velocity was actually over box spec. Excellent performance, I love to see it. For the 168s, our high was 2636. Our low was 2623 for an average of 2631 versus box spec of 2700 feet per second. So we came in 69 feet per second slow with these 168s. Wish it would have been closer to the box. Spec, the 150s did it. Why the 168s didn't? I don't know, maybe it's missing a few grains of powder. Who knows? And the estimated velocity of impact down there at 100 yards for the 150s would be 2689, and for the 168s would be 2447. And now on to penetration, and this is what everyone's wanting to talk about with TTSX bullets. For the 150s, we saw 29 and a half, 29 and a half, and 31 inches for an average of 30 inches of penetration. For the 168 grain bullets, we saw quite a bit deeper penetration. 36 inches, 39 inches, and 42 inches for an average of 39 inches of penetration, nine extra inches versus the 150s. Both of them are going really deep, but I guess if you wanna go as deep as you possibly can, the 168s are your ticket. And just for reference, I'm not sure in what order the videos are gonna come out, but I did recently test the 130 grain version of this bullet in 308, and for that one, we saw 31 inches of penetration on average, so that actually beat the 150 grain version by just a hair. And the 130 grain bullets were going quite a bit faster. But these 150s, 
expanded a little more than those 130s, so all of that just for reference. Nevertheless, excellent penetration for both bullet weights. And on to kinetic energy, with a 150 grain bullet going on average 2,891 feet per second, we're looking at 2,783 feet um, foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle, and about 2,403 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards for the 168s, going on average 2,631 feet per second, we're looking at 2,582 foot-pounds at the muzzle and about 2,233 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards. The 150s are hitting a little bit harder. And again, for reference, that 130 grain load that I did prior to this video was coming in at 2,749 foot-pounds, so just a hair less than the 150s and more than the 168s. Make of that what you will. And a quick announcement before we get to my final thoughts. If you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks, y'all. So on to my final thoughts regarding these 150 and 168 grain Barnes TTSXs out of the 308 Winchester. They both did exactly what they're supposed to do, which is retain basically all of their weight, expand pretty well, 2.1X and 1.8X. You can't ask for much more than that out of a solid copper monolithic bullet. 2.1X is actually towards the top end of what I've seen in your standard calibers for expansion out of solid coppers. Velocity wise, neither one of them were particularly slow. The 150s were excellent, nine feet per second slow. The 168s, 69 feet per second slow. Maybe it's missing a few grains of powder. It is what it is. And then penetration, that's the star of the show here for TTSXs. 30 inches and 39 inches respectively. They're both gonna do everything you need them to. If it were up to me and I, were I was trying to pick which one of these to use, honestly, I would throw the 130 grain load in the mix as well and just use whichever one my rifle shot the most accurately. Because besides that, the performance is pretty darn close between all three. The 168's penetrating a bit deeper. You could argue, argue maybe excessive penetration. If you're going specifically after the biggest medium game, you know, elk, stuff like that, maybe you go with the 168s to make sure you can go as deep as possible. Nevertheless, I think all of these Barnes TTSX loads out of the 308 performed really, really good, excellent. They would be towards the top of my list if I was picking something to use for the 308. Let me and everyone else know how they've done for you if you've used them on game down in the comments. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.